Hey everyone, we're looking at, uh, in our shorter catechism devotional, we're looking at question 18. Uh, last time we talked about what sin was, and now we're looking at uh, how pervasive sin is, what it affects. Uh, and we look at question 18 where it asks, wherein consists the sinfulness of that estate wherein to man fell? And the answer is the sinfulness of that estate wherein to man fell consists in the guilt of Adam's first sin, the want of original righteousness, uh, and the corruption of his whole nature, which is commonly called original sin, together with all actual transgressions which proceed from it. We're going to look at this and just, it sounds very complicated. We're going to look at two things to kind of break this down for us uh, today. We're first looking at the idea of what we call total depravity or radical depravity. And then we're going to look, um, again, if you have this catechism study guide, it's really helpful. We're looking at radical depravity and then what can sinful man not do? What can we not do? And I think that those two areas are going to clean up, clear up uh, this question 18, which if you look at it, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of words there that might seem a bit confusing. So let's look at wherein consists the sinfulness of that estate wherein two men fell by looking first at radical depravity, total depravity. It's one of the five points uh, of Calvinism you might have heard of, total depravity. And the idea is, is this, is that, Man is radically depraved. Uh, some reason I, I like radical instead of total, if we're totally depraved or totally sinful, is that uh, the meaning is really this. Imagine you have, a, I've got a thing of water here. Imagine I have uh, a drop of poison. I put a drop of poison into the water bottle. Now, this is poison now. It will kill me. Uh, it is diluted poison, but it is not 100% pure poison. It is affected by the poison. And that's the kind of the same thing, I, why I like radical depravity better. It's that when sin enters into the world through Adam, through our first, our first our representative, when, he, when sin enters the world through Adam, we become, uh, we're born sinful. Uh, and now you can argue, oh, I don't know if we're born sinful. You know what, if you have kids... They're, you know they're born sinful. If you've witnessed children uh, manipulating their parents, you know they are born sinful. Anyway, uh, the reason I like radical depravity is that we are like that bottle of water that has poison in it. You know, we're not pure poison. We're not as poisonous as could. We're not as concentrated in our poison as possible. But sin has and poison has affected this and corrupted it. It's the same thing for us. Sin corrupts every aspect of our being. That's what it means with the total depravity or radical depravity. Um, we see this, you know, the scriptures, you know, no one's righteous, no, not one. Uh, man's disobedience, many were made sinners. By one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Um, we're radically depraved, okay? That's the first thing I want us to see here. We are we are radically depraved. We are not as sinful as we could be, but we are totally affected by sin. There is sin in every aspect of our lives, every aspect of our thoughts, our actions, our deeds. They're tainted by the poison, by the sin. Okay? Uh, no one is righteous. No, not one. That's, that's kind of where we're going in there. Okay, so is this what does this mean for us? Well... That's where I want to get to the second point. What can sinful man not do? What does that sin do in regards to our relationship with God? Uh, we can't do anything that God considers good because it is tainted by the poison, by the sin. Uh, so what does that mean? If we can't do anything good, how do we save ourselves? Well, my answer would be you can't. You can't save yourself. Only Jesus can save you because he is sinless and dies on our behalf for us to cleanse us from all of our poison, from all of our sin. I don't know why I keep showing you this bottle. Um, but anyway, because of our sin, we cannot do anything to save ourselves. We are um, left to our own, uh, our own nature. We will always incline more and more to evil. It's because we prefer that. It's because we're corrupted. Uh, no truth, Williamson says here, no truth is more often taught in the Bible. Think again of how the whole human race filled the earth with violence before the flood. 
Noah was a little was an outlier. But even this judgment of God did not cure the tendency to evil. You know, we have these moments throughout the Bible where you would think we would get the picture. Uh, Noah and the flood wiping out evil. Remember in Genesis 6, God says he, it's that anthropomorphism that God regretted. He regretted making man. He was hurt by that, 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 that word where it's more of he is reacting to the sin against him. Uh, we see it there. We see it at the Tower of Babel where they try to build this altar to themselves and he, God destroys it and sends them off. You think they get the picture. The same thing happens. Left to our own devices, we are sinful creatures. Uh, and that's why Jesus had to come and die. That's the beauty of, of the gospel, we would say, is that we can't save ourselves, but someone has, God has saved us. And we don't have to do anything to earn that salvation. It is freely offered to us in the gospel through Jesus. And so what is sin? It's any one of conformity unto or going against God's perfect holy will, his law. Uh, because of Adam's sin, we are corrupted. We are, we are fully in every way, totally, radically depraved. We're not as bad as we could be, but we are totally in every way sinful. And that means we can't save ourselves and we need Jesus to save us. That is, that is our view, that's our, our catechism, our denomination, our confession's view of sin. Uh, and that we are as bad, we're worse than we ever thought we were. But by the blood of Jesus, we are redeemed and given grace like never before. So I hope that helps clear up, uh, stir up some conversation about sin. Hope you're enjoying these. Uh, we'll see you all next time. Thanks, y'all. Bye.